Hi everyone and welcome back to our Bible study through each chapter of the Bible in five minutes. Today, Genesis chapter 7. And again, if you want the handout that I'm reading all this information on, you can get it for free at our website to be like Christ.com. When did the events of Genesis chapter 7 take place? Well, we're discussing Noah and the global flood of water that God was going to use to destroy wicked humanity from the face of the earth. And that happened about 1,650 years after the earth was created. We know that from the dates that are given to us in the genealogy of Genesis chapter 5. Our characters are pretty much the same as the last chapter. Noah, he was the son of Lamech. He was one of the very few people on earth that still honored God. And then we have Noah's wife. According to Jewish tradition, her name was Nama. And then Noah's sons and their wives. They accompanied Noah on the ark and they were saved along with him. In terms of where these events took place, well, the flood that we're going to discuss was a global one. It took place over all the face of the earth. So everywhere on the earth is where this chapter happened. <laughs> and so now let's talk about our outline and break this chapter down into uh, nice sections. The first section, verses one through five, Noah prepares for the flood. So because Noah was a righteous man, God promised to keep him alive during the flood in the ark that he was building um, when everything else on earth was destroyed by the water. God also wanted to preserve some of the animal kingdom, which we discussed in the last chapter. And so Noah was told once he finished the ark to take seven pairs of all, quote, clean animals into the ark, along with one pair of unclean animals. Then God told Noah that the flood was about to happen. It was seven days away and that it was going to rain for 40 days and 40 nights straight. And then in verses 6 through 24, the flood actually begins. Noah was 600 years old when the earth was flooded. Noah's wife, his sons, and his sons' wives accompanied him on the ark. And it was actually God who shut the door and sealed the door of the ark before the deluge started. The text says, In the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened, and rain fell upon the earth. Genesis 7, 11 through 12. The water rose so high that the peaks of the highest mountains were covered by at least 15 cubits. Verse 21 says, And all flesh died that moved on the earth, birds, livestock, beasts, and all swarming creatures that swarm on the earth, and all mankind. And the waters remained on the earth for 150 days. And so that is Genesis chapter 7. We're right in the middle of the flood waters being on the earth as we conclude. And we'll talk about how God brings the flood, the flood to a final conclusion and rejuvenates the earth in the next couple chapters. But let's talk about an application first. God is a God of love, but he is also a God of justice and holiness. And this story should be a lesson to modern readers that God will judge sinful people. That is not outside of his character. In fact, it's demanded by his justice. The suggestion that God will just look past everyone's sin and extend love to everybody no matter how evil they've been and everyone will be saved in the end, that is not a, a biblical view of things. And that is not the God that we see in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And so God will judge sin. Imagine if everyone just got away with their, with their sins and their crimes and the horrible things that they did to other people, the way that they corrupted God's creation. Would that be justice? Would we want to serve a God who wasn't just? You know, I don't think that we would. And so yes, God is love, but he is also holy, which means that he can't tolerate sin. That is why Jesus is so important, because all of us have sinned, and Jesus came to pay the price for us to forgive us of those sins, and he took the punishment for us on the cross so that we could receive the grace of God and be saved. 